All right, so this is the third installment of the Heidegger Concept series. This is a short little series that I'm doing uh, to serve as a benchmark for me personally as I make my way through Heidegger's Sein und Zeit. And this is kind of an interesting way to take my interpretation of the text and put it out there for others to see. Now, this is interesting because this is very much related to tool being that I talked about in the first video, or the being of equipment, or zug in German. And Heidegger makes a very interesting point about zug, which is the fact that whereas thinkers before would have said, whenever you interact with entities, such as doors or tables or things like this, you go through this active rational process by which your mind, this is what someone like Hegel maybe would have said, is that there's this rational process that's going on by which you, you know, use things like picture thinking and basically turn the world into a world for oneself or a world of phenomena or pictures. And Heidegger mentions that the most basic being with which Dasein meets itself in its everydayness is the being of tools or zug. And he points out the fact that very often our interaction with equipment is very docile and it's not a cognitive process. When I open up a door to go through the door, the handle of the door and my interaction with it is not a active process that I do every time I walk through the door. Or the more well-known example in Heidegger is the use of a hammer. When I use a hammer, if someone is using a hammer right, you're not using the hammer by understanding the hammer, but rather you're using the hammer for something else. It has a Vorhandenheit or a Zuhandenheit, a presence at hand and a readiness to hand by which it has a use for something and a use with something else. So it has a presence at hand or Vorhandenheit meaning that it is present within the world and it has a Zuhandenheit or a readiness to hand, meaning that it is an object which finds itself in a world for a particular purpose. And in this, he talks a little bit about these three different words, Aufwähligkeit, of Dringlichkeit and of Seelichkeit. And of course, my German is very rudimentary, so forgive me. Um, but these roughly translate to conspicuousness, obtrusiveness, and obstinacy. And these are very interesting concepts. He is trying to talk about the ways in which the the Zuhandenheit or the presence at hand or presence to hand of something is revealed to us. If we want to understand a piece of equipment or Zug in its being, something has to go wrong with it. And basically this can go wrong in three ways. The first is auf Ehrlichkeit. And this is kind of it's unusability. It's the fact that you go to use a tool and you find that it is not able to be used for the purpose you think it would. So for example, this would be you go to open a door and you find that the handle is stuck. And this is very interesting because this forces us out of our everydayness and it forces us into an active cognization and understanding of the Vorhandenheit of that particular entity. With a hammer, say the construction of the hammer is such that it's no longer um, as easily usable for hammering. Say 
suddenly the hammer is made out of gold instead of steel for the head. It no longer hammers the same way, or say the, ha the handle is off balance. It now has this property, which is conspicuousness or off elishkeit. And what he means by conspicuousness is the fact that suddenly this entity almost jumps out at us, jumps out at us, and we immediately realize the sense in which it is lacking its ability to serve a purpose. So that's the first way. Now, the second way, he says, in our concern for dealings, however, we not only come up against unusable things within what is ready to hand already, we also find things which are missing, which are not, which are on, which not only are not handy, but are not to hand at all. Again, to miss something in this way amounts to coming across something unready to hand. When we notice what is unready to hand, that which is ready to hand enters the mode of obtrusiveness, or auf Englishkeit. The more urgently we need what is missing and the more authentically it is encountered in its unreadiness to hand, all the more obtrusive does that which is ready to hand become. So now we have an object that isn't there to be used. We have a use and we have an object which isn't to hand at all. It's not present to us. Say we need a hammer for something and we don't have a hammer. This is another way in which the Zuhandenheit of the hammer becomes very explicit to us. And of course, it becomes obtrusive. The need for the object becomes obtrusive to our everydayness and we suddenly realize the actual necessity of a certain object by virtue of the fact that we don't have it and we need it. And the third kind is Aufsesslichkeit. And this is called obstinacy. He says, in our dealings with the world of our concern, the unready to hand can be encountered not only in the sense of that which is unusable or simply missing, but as something unready to hand which is not missing at all and not unusable, but which stands in the way of our concern. I said that this is objects that are there, but that aren't meant to be used, that aren't for a particular use. Say you need a hammer and you have a mallet or you have a wood block or something like this. You suddenly realize the Vorhandenheit or rather two Han and height, sorry, of the particular item by virtue of the fact that you have something that precisely doesn't serve that purpose. He explains the importance of these three terms. He says, inconspicuousness, obtrusiveness, and obstinacy, that which is ready to hand loses its ready to hand in a certain readiness to hand in a certain way. But in our dealings with what is ready to hand, this readiness to hand is itself understood, though not thematically. It does not vanish simply, but takes its farewell, as it were, in the conspicuousness of the unusable. Readiness to hand still shows itself, and it is precisely here that the worldly character of the ready to hand shows itself, too. And this world, this worldliness, Weltmäßlichkeit, is, a, of course, a very important term. Whenever you come across Weltmäßlichkeit, you know you're hitting something very important, because this is sort of the... Uh, the very structure of the world itself. So he's saying, he uses the word in the conspicuousness of the unusable. So when something becomes unusable or it fails, he says, when an assignment has been disrupted, when something is unusable for some purpose, then the assignment becomes explicit. So this is very interesting because the very lack of there being a tool explains the necessity for that tool, which is lacking therein. And this is a very interesting concept that I'm sure will have some very interesting uses in the future. I hope this has been helpful, and I'll see you in another one.